When I was in high school, a buddy of mine went on a mission trip to Juarez, Mexico over spring break. When we, when we both got back to school the Monday after spring break ended, I asked him, how did it go? He said, great, I saw many blind people receive their sight. Wow, here I was having been a Christian and been in church my entire life, and I have never even seen one miracle, and here he is, my buddy goes down to Mexico for one week, and he says, miracle upon miracle upon miracle. I did wonder why it was only blind people seeing that he mentioned. I mean, it's really cool and miraculous and all, but why nothing else? Why no lame people getting up and walking away? Why no dead people being raised? Why no multiplication of loaves and fish or anything like that? But before he could answer, the bell rang and we had to go to our first class of the day. And I never had another conversation with him about this again. In fact, I can't even bring the picture in my mind of him. I can't remember his face at all. Only the fact that we had this conversation. And this exchange has always bothered me because it's always th this bit about this blind seeing has stuck with me for 25 years. Just this conversation. I don't even know who I had it with, but this conversation. I'm guessing that in reality, he had probably been coached by his youth pastor to say that when all the people that we went down and witnessed to, they had, and the people who had confessed in Christ that these people were once in, bl in uh, blindness spiritually, but now they could see. I always thought that kind of cheapened it a little bit because. You know, here he is talking miracles. I'm thinking miracles. Blind people saw. And, but I was always bothered by the fact that I had never heard of another source to confirm all of this. This seems like it's newsworthy. A bunch of people down in Mexico, let alone the fact that it's a bunch of blind people in Mexico coming to there and they all got healed. This should be newsworthy. This should be known as the great sight bestowal of 1996. And I probably should have heard about it at least once more in my life, and that always bothered me. So it cheapens it in my mind that this was only spiritually blindness being cured. But then over the years of reflecting on this, I have come to believe that my buddy did indeed Witness the miraculous, but maybe just not the, the miracle that I first believed it to be, but no less miraculous. Because I've come in to understand in the 25 years that have since passed that this curing of spiritual blindness is indeed very miraculous. Spiritual blindness is, is what our Old Testament lesson speaks of today. Isaiah tells us that it is sin that causes spiritual blindness. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you so that he does not hear you. Though God wants to all answer the prayers of his people, our sins demonstrate to him that we would rather set out on our own and do things our own way. C.S. Lewis has a great quote here on this matter. He says, There are only two people in the end. Those who say to God, Thy will be done. And those to whom God says in the end, Thy will be done. All that are in hell choose it. Without the self-choice, there could be no hell. No soul that seriously and consistently desires joy will ever miss it. It's a beautiful quote and one that helps us understand what Isaiah hears, says here today. It is the will of the people that they become blind. And when they become blind, it is truly miraculous when they decide to forsake their own ways and turn and follow the ways of God. 
those who turn to God and say, you know what, you are right. Thy will be done. And since it is his will that they be saved, they are. But how hard it is for those who are in sin to recognize that it is their choice to remain in their sins rather than coming out of the darkness. It is hard because it takes a recognition of sin in order for such a thing to happen. In a book we began to study today for our Sunday school, there is a great line stating that in the world today, it, it abandons the loss of a traditional understanding of sin. And this has led to an inability to truly forgive and to find peace with one another. The more we qualify and lessen the definition of sin, the more we also qualify and lessen the definition of forgiveness. Because we cannot forgive what is not a sin. And the more and more things we heap onto this list and declare not sinful, not sinful, not sinful, the less opportunity for there is for there is for God to forgive the less opportunity there is to experience the love of God in the forgiveness of sins. And so then we when we qualify this definition of, of, of love, of sin, we also qualify the definition of love. So that when we qualify the definition that, of love that God has for us, we then find less and less expressions of it. And so we begin to think less and less of God. We look for light. Because, but because we have turned from the light, behold, we only see darkness. So instead we are content to grope around for the wall like the blind, or even worse, like those who have no eyes. And those who have no, no eyes cannot. We all growl like bears and we moan and moan like doves because we look for justice in what we have defined as justice and we find no justice. We, we grope for salvation, but it is far from us because we, we want, because what we want does not exist. To have God's way bend to our way. This is the depth of our spiritual blindness. We redefine sin as nothingness and then blame God when he has nothing to forgive and that, seem, that he seems to be content to watch us fall in our blindness. But Isaiah comes in and he pulls back the curtain that we have set between ourselves and God and, and allows the light to shine on God's view. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man, and, no, and wondered that there was no one to intervene. Then his own arm brought, with his own arm, he brought the victory, and his righteousness upheld him. God, though we pretend that he is not there, nor does he care, sees the pitifulness of our self-imposed prison and decides to take it upon himself to provide the way out. We see this demonstrated in, in Bartimaeus. He cries out into the darkness, Jesus, son of, God, son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man sees what no one else can. He sees the light of Christ off in the distance, God coming down from on high to come dwell amongst them. And this blind man sees him off in the distance, and he begs him to come close that he may see. Those still in darkness try to silence him, to force him to remain with them in the darkness. But Bartimaeus cries out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus calls him to come. And when Bartimaeus does, he throws off the mantle that separates him from the light. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Master, 
let me receive my sight. Master, let me never be separated from this light. Make it so that this life is this light is with me always and allows me to truly see. Allow me to see how much love you truly have for me. Cure my blindness that I may be true, truly forgiven and may truly experience your light and your peace. Go your way. Your faith has made you well, Jesus says. His blind, Bartimaeus' blindness within and without is healed. He is cured inwardly because it says that he followed Jesus on the way. He is cured outwardly so that those who were still stuck in their blindness can see what Jesus had just done for Bartimaeus. The darkness of sin is removed from him. It begins when he hears that Jesus is coming near. In his darkness, he sees the faith of the one who others told him would not hear his pleas, were deaf to his cries, yet here he comes. When Bartimaeus sees through the veil the true light, he understands his sinfulness and asks that Jesus have mercy on him. And when the veil is removed, Bartimaeus can now see. Just like the, para the paralytic who was lowered down through, through, through the ceiling of Peter's house, Bartimaeus is healed because his sins are forgiven. It's amazing what takes place that it, here and that it takes a blind man to allow us to truly see. It is truly a miracle in a world that continually tries to qualify the definition of sinful, qualify it so that it is no longer the definition of one who is full of sin, but now it becomes the definition of one who believes that sin exists at all. He is now the sinner. The two, one who believes that sin exists, that's now the sinner. And even one person should see through this veil and then cast off this oppressive mantle to come and be cured of that blindness and to follow Jesus on the way. This is truly miraculous. Is, this is miraculous. This is a miracle every time because it can only happen through Jesus Christ and because everything is fighting against this to make to allow it to happen. So while my friend may not have witnessed the great sight bestowal of 1996, he did truly witness the miraculous. I was just too blind to understand at the time. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.